What's up everyone, Mike Thornton here. On today's video, I'm going to settle the age old debate, is it better to buy a home or to rent a home? Now I follow a few high profile finance channels and I have just found that people are botching this analysis. So today I wanna to go through an actual example with you and to go through all the puts and takes that are necessary to do an apples to apples comparison between buying a home and renting a home. Let's talk about a few statistics related to home ownership. Home ownership actually peaked in 2004 at 69%. From that point, we saw a steady decline. It actually bottomed out in 2016 at about 62%. And since 2016, we've seen it trickle back up to where we are now at about 66%. In our market here, I've seen some downward pressure on home ownership rates. It's really pinching out some of those first time home buyers that may have a low down payment, may have, you know, just be trying to buy their first home, and they're really being pinched out by investors who are adding to their portfolios by buying up a lot of starter homes. As far as wealth goes, there's a considerable gap between those that own a home and rent a home. On average, the household wealth of somebody that rents a home is $6,200, and the average household wealth of somebody that owns a home is 255000 So that's an interesting fact, but doesn't really answer the question, is it better to buy a home or to rent a home? So let's jump into an example together. This is an actual home here in Chicagoland that was purchased about a year ago, and these are the actual numbers associated with that property. So that property was purchased for $250,000. So for the down payment, let's just for an example sake say, a 12% down payment. That is actually the average down payment in the United States. In addition to that, we are uh, borrowing money at a 3.875 interest rate. We have property taxes of $5,800 a year, and we also have insurance of about $1,000 a year. Altogether, that makes up your payment of principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, and that is $1,600 a month. So this is the point where I see a lot of these analysis go wrong. I see folks that compare the payment, in this case $1,600, to the rent and drawing a conclusion from there. The problem is there are so many other factors that we need to include and consider when understanding what the true cost is and what the true benefit is. So stick with me. These are the puts and takes that I want you to leave with and I want you to understand so that when you do the analysis for yourself, you can understand if it's better to buy a home or to rent a home. So let's jump into some of those additional expenses. So if we're gonna compare these apples to apples, we need to understand the cost of maintaining this property since that is the responsibility of the owner and not the responsibility of the renter. The first bucket we need to consider are capital expenditures. So those are the big ticket items. That is the roof that needs to be replaced every 25 years. That is the water heater that needs to be replaced every 10 years. The AC unit and the furnace that's about every 20 years. When we look at the cost over the lifespan of those items, we can back into a prorated amount that we need to set aside each month to pay for those items as they come up. So I've done that math for us behind the scenes, and that is about $200 a month we need to set aside. In addition to that, we have maintenance and repairs to maintain our property as well. That is the random plumber visit or electrician that needs to stop over to fix something. All those little things that come up we're gonna consider that to be $100 a month. Lastly, I wanna look at something that I don't see many people considering at all, and that is the cost to exit the property when you own it. Those are the realtor fees, those are the title fees, those are all the closing costs, and we need to budget for those as well if we really wanna get a clear picture of what it is to own versus rent. We're gonna consider about $200 a month to put aside to eventually pay the cost that come up when you need to exit that property. So we have $1,600 a month for our payment. We have an additional $500 a month between capital expenditures, maintenance and repairs, and cost to exit the property. And we arrive at our new net cost of $2,100 a month. Now, if you were to stop there, that would be a pretty decent analysis, but it isn't including everything just yet. There are a few more factors that I want you to consider. The first being principal pay down. Think of that as a four savings account. That is the portion of your payment that goes towards paying down the original principal that you borrowed from the bank. If you go to sell that property, that becomes liquid and that is money that is yours at that point in time. So we definitely want to consider it as a benefit. On the flip side, 
We also have an opportunity cost. If we would have taken that down payment or the difference between getting into a home that we purchased versus a home that we rented and we invested that in the stock market. Well, let's just assume that you have, you could get a historical return of about 10%. What would be that cost that you foregoed because you bought the house and you needed that 30K for the down payment versus you investing it? That comes out to about $250 a month. In addition, we need to also figure out the amount of interest write off that you get back after doing your taxes. So your interest obviously is an expense, but because you get to write off that expense, a portion of that comes back to you in the form of a tax deduction. So in this example, let's assume that our interest is about $630 a month based on the real estate calculator that I used and that your tax bracket is 25%. So in that case, you would get a deduction back or a credit back of $158 a month. So we had that $2,100 a month of our net cost. We have now figured in the benefit of our principal pay down, which is $375 a month. We've considered the opportunity cost of not having invested that money, which is a cost of $250 a month. We have a benefit of that tax deduction of $158 a month for our interest write-off. And lastly, lastly, we need to consider the appreciation on a house. Now, the last couple of years we've seen astronomical appreciation, which really kind of throws off this analysis and almost would always point you to buying a house versus renting a house based on how much homes have appreciated. But let's just assume that that 10, 10% appreciation, give or take, is an anomaly and it's going to settle back down to roughly what's average. Depending on your source, the average appreciation is about 25 to 3%. Let's assume that we're going to be running a little bit hot coming off of this super high inflationary time, and let's consider 4% for our analysis today. At a 4% appreciation on a home purchase of $250,000, that is a benefit of about $833 a month, just in appreciation. All of that figured in. Your payment, which is considered of your principal, interest, taxes, insurance. You have your CapEx expenses. You have your maintenance and repairs. You have your cost of exiting that property. You have your interest write-off, principal pay down. You're figuring in your opportunity cost that you, what you could have achieved if you were to invest that elsewhere. And lastly, but not least, your appreciation benefit for have owning that home. You put all that into a blender, you come out to an all-in cost of just under $1,000 a month. Now on the flip side, this same house, in our market at least, would rent for about $2,100 a month. Now as a renter, obviously, you don't have some of these additional responsibilities. We don't need to figure anything in for CapEx, uh, really probably minimal for repairs even. A lot of that falls back on the landlord. So really it's just our rent and our renter's insurance, which is cheaper than homeowner's insurance. So all in on the rental side, you're about $2,150 a month. But as a renter, obviously, you don't enjoy the benefits of appreciation, which is a huge number in today's market. If you were to compare $2,150 to rent that home versus the all-in cost of just under $1,000 to own that home, there's a clear answer of what's better. Buying this house is better than renting this house. So big caveat here. If you were to have changed the amount that you put down in the property, you could have arrived at a slightly different solution. Meaning, if you put $100,000 down, that greatly impacts not only your payment, but also your opportunity costs of which you could have achieved at 10% return if you were to have invested that $100,000. Or you could be in a market that has uh, rental rates much closer to what it would cost from a payment perspective to own that house. We just so happen to be in a different environment here, at least west of Chicago, where a payment on this thing is going to be, like we talked about, about $1,600 a month. And the rental rate is $500 more a month. That's a considerable spread. And that makes it pretty inaffordable to rent versus buy, and at least in our market. What's more important is I want you to understand the puts and the takes. I want you not to get fooled by the calculators online that just look at the payment compared to the rent. You're missing so many factors. Again, you need to layer in all the additional benefits, all the additional expenses to arrive at the true cost of owning versus renting. I hope this sparked you to think a little bit differently when you go to analyze whether you want to buy versus rent. 
I hope it opened your eyes to some of the hidden expenses and also some of the hidden benefits of owning a home. And I hope again that you enjoyed this video today. Hopefully you join us again. Please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified when we post new videos and we'll talk to you soon.